What's going on everyone? My name is Evan Jemnikar and I'm the Daily Dino Guy. Velociraptor has to be one of the most iconic dinosaurs to ever exist. Its curved claws, sharp teeth, and agile body would have made it a truly terrifying creature among dinosaurs because of how deadly it would have been. But if Velociraptor was alive today, would you be able to survive an encounter with this dinosaur? In this video, we'll be looking at the biology and behavior of this dinosaur to see if you could survive against it in an encounter. Let me know in the comments if you think you could go toe to toe with this dinosaur. First off, let's clarify exactly what a Velociraptor looked like. Jurassic Park shows these predators as six foot tall scaly monsters, but that's far from the truth. In reality, Velociraptor would have been similar in size to a coyote. It would have been about six feet or two meters long, and it only would have stood about two feet or 60 centimeters high. It also would have only weighed a little bit over 40 pounds or just under 20 kilograms. Instead of scaly skin, it would have been covered in feathers from its head down to its ankles, leaving only its scaly feet exposed. Velociraptor would have sported a thin, narrow skull filled with serrated teeth. Despite being a smaller dinosaur, it would have been a fearsome predator in the sand dunes of ancient Mongolia. Velociraptor may not have been as intelligent as it was in Jurassic Park, but it was an efficient hunter. There's quite a bit of research showing exactly how raptors would have hunted their prey. Paleontologists recreated a robotic model of a feathered dinosaur to see if its feathers could be used to scare prey. They found that when the robot flared out its wings and its tail feathers, the animal that saw this display was frightened by it. Therefore, it seems that raptors probably engaged their prey by first creating an intimidating display. By flushing their wings and their tail feathers, their prey would have been startled, confused, and likely pushed into flight or fight. In this case, its prey would have chose flight. From there, a velociraptor would chase after its prey. By comparing the muscles of modern animals with their top speeds, paleontologists have been able to estimate the speeds of many dinosaurs. Velociraptor is estimated to have reached speeds up to 33.9 miles per hour, or 54.56 kilometers per hour. For reference, this is faster than most dogs. This would have made it one of the fastest dinosaurs in its environment. After it caught its prey, it would have used its feet to hold it down like modern birds of prey. Paleontologists have noticed the similarities between the toe claws of Velociraptor and the talons of eagles, hawks, and other predatory birds. These birds use their talons to tightly hold on to their prey. From there, they would hold their prey down with their weight flapping their wings for balance and start to eat them. It's thought that Velociraptor and other types of raptors probably did something similar to this. Raptors had powerful foot bones capable of fully flexing, meaning they could grab a hold of their prey just like modern predatory birds. Velociraptor would hold its prey down and latch its curved claw into it, which kept it from escaping. From there, it would then be able to eat whatever dinosaur it caught. Paleontologists have looked at the skull of Velociraptor and have been able to reconstruct the muscles of its jaws. Based on these reconstructions, it's estimated that Velociraptor could deliver a bite force of about 304 newtons. While this is roughly the same as a medium-sized dog, Velociraptor wouldn't have focused on delivering a powerful bite. Tiny scratches on raptor teeth aligned in specific directions show that it had a special way of biting called the puncture and pull method. After biting down, raptors would also focus on pulling meat off the bone. Their serrated teeth were similar to steak knives, making it much easier for them to cut flesh rather than break bones. This may have been way deadlier. There doesn't seem to be any direct evidence that raptors hunted in packs, so we can only assume that they were solitary hunters. Some other species of raptors are known to hunt prey much bigger than themselves. Deinonychus, a bigger relative of Velociraptor, is known to hunt Tenontosaurus, a much larger dinosaur. Many modern predators that hunt larger prey usually do this with the help of a pack. This may be indirect evidence that some raptors hunted in packs, but we can't say that Velociraptor hunted in packs for sure. So with all this in mind, how would a human stack up against a Velociraptor? Let's start by seeing if the most athletic humans on Earth could stand up to a Velociraptor. If you were to see a predator, your first instinct would probably be to run, right? So could a human outrun a raptor? Usain Bolt, the fastest man alive, set the record for the 100 meter dash at 27.8 miles per hour or 44 kilometers per hour. But remember, a Velociraptor could run up to 33.9 miles per hour or 54.56 kilometers per hour. So it's significantly faster than any human to ever exist. All right, but what about fighting capabilities? Can a human generate enough power to fight off a Velociraptor? The current record for the strongest punch ever recorded goes to the current UFC light heavyweight champion, Alex Pereira. Alex has been filmed generating 191,796 Franklins with a single punch. While this wasn't scientifically conducted, 
we can estimate the velocity of his punch to calculate the force of his strike. Assuming his punch travels 0.4 meters in one second, which is roughly the length of his arm, this would mean that his punch would generate 7,913.82 newtons. This would be roughly 26 times more powerful than the bite force of a velociraptor, which is 304 newtons. At that force, you'd be able to break any bone. So it is humanly possible to beat a velociraptor in a fight, but not all of us are UFC light heavyweight champions. Can the average person generate enough force to beat a velociraptor in a fight? Using calculations that assume a punch speed of anywhere from three to seven meters per second, we can calculate the average punch force of a human. The average man can generate about 907 to 2,117 newtons when punching. The average woman can generate 771 to 1,799 newtons. So that's still much stronger than a velociraptor bite. Now that we understand what a velociraptor and a human are capable of, we can figure out the best way to survive a raptor encounter. Before we continue, I wanna take a moment to thank the amazing people that make these videos possible, my Daily Dino Direct members. Thank you so much for your support and passion for paleontology. Because of you, this channel is able to put out videos that are as understandable and as accessible as possible. If you wanna support this channel and take your dino knowledge to the next level, then you should consider joining Daily Dino Direct. You'll get access to bonus videos, Q&A sessions, and masterclass lectures. Plus, you'll be a part of a community that shares your passion for dinosaurs, paleontology, and science. All right, so knowing everything we've learned so far, what would be the best way to survive a raptor encounter? Assuming it doesn't run away from you or try to ambush you, the first thing you'll want to do is stand your ground. Remember, it will try to flare its wings out at you. It's hoping you will either instinctually resort to flight or even worse, freeze. There's absolutely no way you'd be able to outrun a velociraptor. It'd be physically impossible for any human to escape. Plus, if you expose your back when you turn to run, it's probably going to pounce on you. From there, it would sink its claws into you and start to bite. So you need to start by standing your ground. Eye contact is very intimidating for many animals. So looking into its eyes will show that you're not intimidated by it. A common way to scare off birds of prey is by extending your arms and waving them back and forth. This is to give the impression that you're bigger in size. And based on what we know from velociraptors, extending your arms out could act as your own intimidating display. Usually in situations like this, an animal will get a sense that you are bigger than it and it will likely run away. At which point you would have avoided a confrontation and you'd be safe. But what if the Velociraptor didn't back down and instead decided to attack? In this situation, the last thing you want to do is curl up into a defensive position. Again, a Velociraptor is waiting to pounce on top of you in order to gain control over you. Even in the fetal position with your soft parts covered, a Velociraptor will likely start to bite and pull at you. Anything exposed like your arms or legs will quickly be ripped to shreds. At the very minimum, you want to jump back and keep your distance. You want to keep your hands up to defend yourself and call for help. Since you have the size and power advantage, you'd want to fight back. But whatever you do when fighting a Velociraptor, don't get too close to try and wrestle or grapple with it. A one in a million fossil called the Fighting Dinosaurs shows why it's a bad idea to get too close to a Velociraptor. A Protoceratops was found fighting back against a Velociraptor and they both died while fighting. Even though the Protoceratops was biting down on the Velociraptor, the raptor latched on completely. It sunk its foot claws, hand claws, and jaws around the Protoceratops. It held on and eventually fought until both died. Don't make the same mistake and get too close to the raptor. Instead, you'll want to punch or kick all while staying at least an arm's length away from the raptor. Because the head of a Velociraptor is small and narrow, it's a good weak spot. If you can find a weapon like a tree branch to strike and keep your distance, that would be even better. A Velociraptor will likely know it's outmatched and run away. But either way, you want to fight until you're safe. And that is how you would survive an encounter with a Velociraptor. While dinosaurs seem scarier and much more dangerous than modern animals, there are still ways to be able to deal with them. Velociraptors are ambush and pursuit predators that chase down similarly sized dinosaurs. So it would be unlikely that one would even target a human if it ever had the chance in the first place. And luckily, these predators are extinct, so you'll never have to run into one of these. But just in case Jurassic Park does become a reality, now you're prepared. If you made it this far into the video, then you probably love dinosaurs as much as I do. If that's true, then you should sign up for my newsletter. Every month I gather all the cutting edge research on dinosaurs and I send it to you absolutely free. Go to my website and sign up. If you enjoyed this in-depth survival guide, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss an in-depth discussion on dinosaurs. And don't forget to check out Daily Dino Guy on Instagram, 
Facebook, and TikTok for even more fascinating dinosaur facts. Until next time, keep exploring the ancient past with me, Daily Dino Guy.